OpenAI just rolled out ChatGPT 5.2. And for the first time since 2022, ChatGPT is no longer the obvious default for the smartest chatbot. Last month, Google's Gemini 3 shocked the industry, topping benchmarks, dominating leaderboards, and forcing OpenAI into response mode. Code red is what they called it. So I put ChatGPT 5.2 head to head against Gemini 3. Same prompts, same tasks, and what I found surprised me more than I expected. Let's rewind two weeks. In late November, Google dropped Gemini 3 and it immediately topped every benchmark that mattered. Abstract reasoning, Gemini 3 won. Visual understanding, Gemini 3. Scientific problem solving, Gemini 3. It even broke records on humanity's last exam, a test designed specifically to stump AI models. And here's the kicker. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, publicly praised it. He called Gemini 3 a great model on Twitter. That's like Apple congratulating Samsung and making a better iPhone. It doesn't happen unless the situation is serious. Then Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, announced he was switching from ChatGPT to Gemini after testing it for just two hours. He posted about it publicly. That's not just a preference. That's a signal to the entire enterprise AI market that Google just leapfrogged OpenAI. This was OpenAI's oh no moment. For the first time since ChatGPT launched in 2022 and put Google on the defensive, the tables had turned. OpenAI was now the one playing catch up. And honestly, keeping track of all this has become its own full-time job. New benchmarks, new leaks, new model drops every few weeks. It's impossible to follow manually. That's why while testing all of this, I've been using AI Master Pro is my central hub. Let me show you real quick how it fits into my workflow. Inside the dashboard, I've got the AMSR method course, templates, and the thing I use the most, AMSR, my personal AI assistant trained exactly on models like these. If I ask it, compare GPT 5.2's reasoning system with Gemini 3, it breaks the differences down instantly and cleanly. There's also prompt creator, and we've added SOAR 2 Pro VO3, so I can go from research scripting, and video generation in one place. And we're given the first 1,000 people 24% discount on the annual plan. Link below if you want to check it out. And now let's go to OpenAI's response. According to internal reports confirmed by The Verge, Sam Altman sent out a memo to the entire OpenAI team declaring what they called Code Red. That's not corporate speak for let's work a little harder. Code Red means drop everything else and fix this now. Here's what OpenAI did. They froze development on Sora, their AI video generator that everyone was waiting for. They paused work on Pulse, a personal assistant project they'd been teasing. They shelved shopping agents, ad integrations, and every fancy new persona experiment in the pipeline. Everything got redirected toward one goal, make ChatGPT faster, smarter, and more reliable than Gemini 3. Not next quarter, not next month, right now. The original plan was to release GPT 5.2 at the end of December, maybe even push it to early January. Instead, they shipped it on December 11th. That's a three week acceleration. In the world of AI development, where models take months to train and test, that's basically sprinting. This wasn't about adding flashy features. GPT 5.2 doesn't have new voices, new UI tricks or gimmicks. This was about strengthening the core, reasoning, speed, reliability, and how well the model understands what you're actually asking for. And according to reporting from the Wall Street Journal, GPT 5.2 isn't even the final step in this sprint. Internally, OpenAI is already lining up another model release in January focused on faster responses, stronger image generation, and a more natural GPT-40 style personality, the update that's supposed to officially close this first code red phase. So what actually changed? Let's break it down. OpenAI isn't pitching GPT-5.2 as a flashy reinvention. It's a focused upgrade aimed at one thing, making ChatGPT more dependable for real work, especially in the thinking variant. First, it's stronger on real knowledge work. This isn't a vague claim. OpenAI publishes an evaluation called GDPVal, where experts judge whether the model wins or ties against professionals on well-defined tasks. GPT 5.2 thinking reaches a 70.9% win or tie rate. OpenAI also explicitly notes that these tasks include things like presentations and spreadsheets, actual work outputs, not toy prompts. Second, code and performance improved in measurable ways. OpenAI highlights 
SWE Bench Pro and SWE Bench Verified, two real world coding benchmarks. GPT 5.2 thinking sets a new high on both, including 55.6% on SWE Bench Pro and 80% on SWE Bench Verified. In practice, this means a higher chance the model can reason through real bugs, refactors, and multi-step code changes without falling apart mid-task. Third, fewer wrong answers in real usage. According to OpenAI, GPT 5.2 thinking hallucinates less on de-identified real chat GPT queries, responses containing factual errors were about 30% less common compared to GPT 5.1 thinking. This directly affects how reliable the model feels when you use it for research, analysis, or decision-making. Fourth, Long context reasoning is significantly stronger. OpenAI calls out state-of-the-art performance on MRCRV2, a long context reasoning evaluation, including near perfect results and variance, reaching up to 256K tokens. In plain terms, GPT 5.2 is less likely to lose track of context when working through long documents, transcripts, or multi-part projects. Fifth, vision improvements that matter for workflows. OpenAI describes GPT 5.2 thinking as their strongest vision model so far, with roughly half the error rate on tasks like chart reasoning and software interface understanding. This directly impacts workflows involving screenshots, dashboards, diagrams, and UI analysis. Overall, GPT 5.2 isn't GPT 6 and OpenAI doesn't claim a new architecture. It's a reliability focused release. Stronger knowledge work performance, better real world coding results, fewer factual errors, and much more robust long context and vision capabilities, especially in the thinking configuration. All right, let's get into the real test. I'm gonna run GPT 5.2 and Gemini 3 through the same tasks and show you exactly where each one wins. I'm giving both models this prompt. Plan a three-day road trip from San Francisco to Yosemite with two stops along the way. Factor in a $500 budget, preference for hiking trails under five miles, and avoiding toll roads. Give me a day-by-day -day itinerary with estimated costs. Here's what happened. Gemini 3 gave me a solid itinerary. It listed hiking options, estimated fuel and lodging costs, suggested budget-friendly places to stay, and laid everything Thing out day by day. It was thorough, cleanly structured, and easy to follow. GPT 5.2 did all of that too, but the way the plan was laid out felt more intentional. The itinerary was tighter, driving time, hiking, and rest were balanced more evenly across the three days. The longest drive was placed earlier in the trip, and the daily schedules felt less rushed overall. Nothing flashy, just a plan that was easier to read, easier to follow, and felt more thought through from start to finish. I think the winner here is GPT 5.2. The reasoning felt tighter, more deliberate, and more consistent across the entire plan. To be fair, both ChatGPT and Gemini are strong at this kind of general reasoning, but general purpose chatbots hit a wall fast when you need domain-specific automation, especially in research and science. That's where specialized AI agents are already pulling ahead. I've been testing SciSpace Biomed Agent. It's an add-on to the main SciSpace agent, purpose-built specific specifically for biomedical research workflows. Here's what makes it different. Biomedical research is fragmented across hundreds of tools, paywall databases, sequence and platforms, and constantly updating datasets. Biomed Agent connects over 150 specialized biomedical tools and automates the entire pipeline with a single prompt. Let me show you a real example. I'll ask it to predict drug safety profiles for a specific compound. That just ran pharmacology predictions that would normally require three separate platforms and manual cross-referencing. Same agent handles clinical genomics, variant interpretation, scar and sec analysis, CRISPR workflows, basically any biomedical research task end-to-end. -end. Here's a bonus. You can also generate publication-ready biomedical illustrations. Watch this. That's a diagram you'd normally spend hours building or outsource to a designer. SciSpace just opened early access. You can try Biomed Agent for free right now. The link is in the description below. Anyway, back to our next test. For coding, I wanted something you can actually see on screen, not just numbers in a console. I asked both models to create a simple one-page daily dashboard. The requirements were a title with my name, a section for today's tasks, a small notes area, 
and a built-in focus timer. Gemini 3 generated a clean layout with all the sections in place. I ran the code and the page loaded correctly with a basic but usable design. GPT 5.2 produced a similar page, but it landed closer to a real dashboard on the first try. The layout is more structured with clear card style sections, readable typography, and subtle UI details that make it feel finished rather than like a rough draft. The focus timer is also more capable. It includes multiple preset modes and a manual slider to set the time exactly, which makes it more flexible than Gemini's basic timer. Winner, GPT 5.2 by a narrow margin. Both can build a working page. GPT 5.2 just ships a more polished, more usable interface immediately. You can also ask ChatGPT to show a preview directly in the chat and you effectively get the same functionality. This is convenient because you can immediately see what the interface looks like without downloading a file or opening a browser. At the same time, Gemini explicitly says it can provide this kind of preview and only suggests saving the HTML locally. For the image test, I used something everyone recognizes, a weekly calendar. I have a screenshot of a week filled with meetings, overlapping calls, back-to-back -back tasks, and a couple of personal events mixed in. Then I asked both models the same question. Look at this calendar and tell me three things. Which days are overloaded, where I have time conflicts, and how you would reorganize this week to make it more manageable. Gemini 3 correctly identified the heaviest days and flagged the obvious double-booked slots. It suggested moving a few meetings to quieter days and add in one longer focus block instead of several short ones. Solid, practical advice. GPT 5.2 went a step further. It grouped similar meetings together, consolidated short scattered tasks into larger focused blocks and laid out a clear plan for reorganizing the week with defined boundaries for deep work and recovery. Instead of isolated tips, it provided a structured approach that made the week feel realistic and sustainable for an actual person. In my opinion, GPT 5.21. Both models understood the calendar, but GPT was better at turning a cluttered week into a realistic and less stressful plan. What about speed? Speed with AI chat models isn't a single clean faster or slower number. It depends on server load, model settings, and how long and complex the prompt and response are. Instead of stopwatch style claims, the practical point matters more here. OpenAI positions GPT 5.2 as being tuned for latency sensitive workflows, meaning it's designed to return useful results quickly in real everyday use, not just in artificial benchmarks. As for serious speed comparisons, with dozens of repeated runs and tiny differences measured down to fractions of a second, that's something I'd leave to AI enthusiasts and benchmarking communities who specialize in that kind of testing. For real work, what matters to me is how efficiently I get to a usable, high-quality answer that actually matches the request, not raw response speed. Speed is one thing, but what's coming next is a whole different story. GBT 5.2 is not OpenAI's endgame. It's a stopgap, a fast punch to reclaim ground while they work on something much bigger. According to external reporting, OpenAI is also working on a next-step architecture codenamed Project Garlic. This isn't just an incremental update. Garlic is reportedly built around efficient pre-training, the idea of training a smaller model to reach the knowledge and capability of a much larger one. Why does that matter? Because smaller models run faster, cost less to operate, and can be deployed in more places, like on your phone, on edge devices, or in enterprise systems where compute costs are a major concern. And based on those same reports and leaks from people familiar with the project, Garlic could land in early 2026, possibly as GPT 5.5 or even GPT 6. Some coverage claims early internal results look strong on coding, reasoning, and speed while using fewer resources. GPT 5.2 is the bridge. It buys OpenAI time to finish Garlic without ceding the entire market to Google in the meantime. And that's smart strategy because if they'd waited until Garlic was ready to respond to Gemini 3, they'd risk losing enterprise customers and developer trust for months. If you're a ChatGPT Plus or Pro user, GPT 5.2 is rolling out to you now. 
you don't need to do anything. As the rollout reaches your account, you'll see GPT 5.2 appear in the model picker. If you're on the free tier, GPT 5.2 may not be available yet. OpenAI says the rollout starts with paid plans and expands gradually. So if you don't see it right away, check again later. Here's how to make the most of GPT 5.2 right now. One, use it for multi-step reasoning tasks. If you're planning a project, debugging code, or analyzing complex data, this is where GPT 5.2 shines compared to earlier versions. Two, take advantage of the speed. If you're iterating on prompts, revising copy, testing different approaches, refining output, the faster response time adds up. You'll get more done in less time. Three, lean into multimodality, upload screenshots, diagrams, charts, or photos, and ask GPT 5.2 to extract insights. It's more reliable at understanding visual context than previous GPT-5 models. Four, be specific about format. One of the improvements in 5.2 is better adherence to formatting instructions. If you want JSON, say so. If you want a table, specify columns. The model is less likely to drift away from your instructions midway through. So here's the big question. Should you stick with ChatGPT or switch to Gemini 3? If speed and reliability matter most to you, like if you're using AI for coding, workflows, business analysis, or anything where you need consistent, dependable output, ChatGPT 5.2 is the better choice right now. It's faster, it makes fewer errors, and it integrates with a massive ecosystem of third-party tools through OpenAI's API. If cutting edge multimodality is your priority, if you're working heavily with images, videos, scientific diagrams, or visual reasoning tasks, Gemini 3 still has a slight edge. It's better at abstract visual reasoning and tasks that require understanding complex spatial relationships. For most people, honestly, the gap is narrow enough that it comes down to which platform you're already invested in. If you've built workflows around ChatGPT, custom GPTs, and OpenAI integrations, there's no urgent reason to switch. GPT 5.2 closes the performance gap that Gemini 3 opened. If you're starting from scratch and your work is heavily visual or scientific, Gemini 3 is worth trying. But for general purpose AI use, writing, coding, analysis, automation, ChatGPT 5.2 just reclaimed its spot as the most reliable option. The AI race isn't over, it's accelerating. Gemini 3 forced the market to recalibrate. And OpenAI's answer is GPT 5.2, a rollout focused on real practical upgrades, stronger reasoning, better long context performance, improved tool use, and sharper vision. This isn't a static race, models shift fast, so if you're building anything serious on top of them, you have to stay flexible and retest your workflows regularly. And if you want to stay ahead of whatever comes next without drowning in info overload, check out AI Master Pro. It's where I track, test, and learn everything in one place. First 1,000 members get 24% off the annual plan. Link below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.